Welcome to day six. Day six of uh, how to pass the NCLEX. So if you are a nursing student and you are preparing for the NCLEX, I want to welcome you to our YouTube channel, NCLEX Crusade International, where every week we share valuable information that can help you prepare for the NCLEX and help you uh, become a registered nurse in the United States. My name is uh, Professor Rainier Arado. I have been teaching how to prepare for the NCLEX for over six years already, and it is a blessing for me to be able to be here with you and guide you in your journey to become a registered nurse. Okay, I'm happy that everybody can listen to me and you can see the presentation. So if you are on YouTube, you should be able to see a presentation that says, a slide that says how to pass the NCLEX live day number six. So if you are ready to begin, make sure you comment in the comment section that you're ready to begin. Remember always, always subscribe to our YouTube channel. Make sure that you like this video and of course, share this uh, YouTube presentation or, or live with other nursing students who are also preparing for the NCLEX, okay? So I'm gonna be mainly uh, looking at the camera here on uh, for YouTube because that's where I'm doing the presentation, but uh, I will be connecting with uh, TikTok and Instagram as well. So thank you for, for joining us and let's begin day six. So as you know, we have been practicing questions uh, every day here in our YouTube channel. And if you are looking uh, to develop your critical thinking, this channel is for you. Our specialty is teaching you how to develop your critical thinking. Yes, I will be sharing content, valuable content information with you, like you saw in yesterday's training, we even review a little bit of anatomy and physiology, which is uh, very, very important for your NCLEX success. But even more important than that is to develop the ability to think critically and answer NCLEX question the correct way. So I always tell this to my students. It doesn't matter how much content you know. If you do not have the ability to apply that nursing content on an NCLEX question. So that, that is the most important thing, to have that ability to apply nursing content. All right, very good. So let's begin today's training. Before we, before I share today's presentation, I want to provide you with our contact number for our academy. In case you're new, we have an English division and a Spanish division. So if you are an English speaker preparing for the NCLEX and you need to contact our academy, that is the number. And if you're a Spanish speaker and you want to speak with our uh, Spanish advisor, well, there is the number for our advisor so you can speak to her in Spanish, okay? Remember, we have a YouTube channel that is in Spanish, NCLEX Crusade, and we have a YouTube channel that is, it is this one, that it is in English. Everything here that we teach is in English. But if you feel more comfortable uh, on uh, listening to the presentation in Spanish, make sure you visit our Spanish YouTube channel. So this is the question that I want to uh, practice with you today. A client is 48 hours post abdominal aneurysm repair. So always important to begin looking at the key factors of an NCLEX question. I always tell you, you need to identify the key factors of an NCLEX question. And what is what are the key factors? Who is your patient? What is the problem with your patient? What is the medical diagnosis? Do you have any keywords? Is there any keywords, for example, 48 hours? This is a keyword. Post, this is a keyword. After the surgery, after an abdominal aneurysm repair, 
So knowing the diagnosis or identifying the diagnosis is extremely important as well. What is the diagnosis? What was the procedure? The procedure was an abdominal aneurysm repair that was completed 48 hours ago. The question states, which assessment by the nurse is caused for the greatest concern? This is another keyword that is important, greatest. What does that indicate? What, what, what does this word greatest mean? This means that this is a prioritization question. This is a question where, yeah, content is important, but you need to apply that content in order to identify what is the greatest concern. Because it could be, you could be facing in a scenario where several things is of a concern, but you need to identify what is the greatest concern, okay? So what is the greatest concern in this scenario? I'm gonna give you the answer to this question at the end of our presentation, but before we get to that, I want to share some content information so you really understand what you're doing. You need to understand what is going on. What is an abdominal aneurysm repair? If you recall from yesterday's training, from yesterday's live, day number five, we talked about the uh, condition of an abdominal aneurysm. We even talked about what is the priority when there is a rupture of an abdominal aortic aneurysm. And today we're talking about a medical management, a surgical management, which is a, an, a, an abdominal aortic aneurysm repair. So what is that? What is this procedure? In this image, you can see an open repair of an abdominal aortic aneurysm. So basically, I want you to understand how this procedure is performed. And by understanding how the procedure is performed, you can understand complications. So basically, we can see here the descending abdominal aorta as we uh, described yesterday, we thought about this yesterday, we see that the abdominal uh, aortic aneurysm is below, below the renal arteries, and we can see this bulge. Remember, as we saw in yesterday's live, the patient had a pulsatile mass, and that uh, led us the, the information that this is a AAA, an abdominal aortic aneurysm. But now the patient went to surgery and this was corrected. So an aortic aneurysm recession begins with a proximal and distal clamp. You can see it here in the image, a proximal and distal clamps. And I ask you why do they use a proximal and distal clamp while repairing the abdominal aortic aneurysm? This is completed in order to detain the loss of blood and also to facilitate, to facilitate the graft placement from one end, from this end, from the proximal end, to the distal end. Now, you may ask, well, how, how is this performed? Do they have to use any other, any other medical equipment to be able to complete this surgery? Because technically, we have to stop the blood flow in this area between the two clamps. But this needs to be done rather quickly. Because as we know, if a tissue don't receive blood, doesn't receive oxygenation, that tissue dies and we will see necrosis. 
So this surgery requires an equipment, a very, um, very complex equipment that is called ECMO, extracorporeal membrane oxygenation. By the use of this uh, ECMO machine, we can provide circulation to that other part of the body post clamps. Okay, this provides a normal circulation to every organ distal to the surgical repair. This is important to understand the complexity of this procedure. As you can tell, there is a lot of uh, risk that can go in a patient undergoing an abdominal aortic aneurysm recession. Okay, now as a nurse, the most important is not to really understand the surgical procedures because we're not a surgeon, we're not a doctor, and we are not doing the USMLE. We're doing the NCLEX exam for nurses. So what do you need to know? You need to know preoperative interventions because that is what the NCLEX is going to be about. The preoperative intervention and postoperative intervention. So let's talk about the preoperative intervention. Basically, we want to assess all peripheral pulses as a baseline that we will use later on postoperative to compare. So not only you're assessing, <coughs> sorry, the peripheral pulses to identify circulation to this area, but also to develop a baseline that we can compare after the surgery, because we need to identify if the surgery was effective. Was the problem corrected? How are we going to know that? Well, we got to assess the pulses. Okay, so what is assessing pulses going, going to give me? Why is that important? Remember, always think of why. The mistake that nurses make all the time is that you try to memorize everything, but you do not understand why. And what's the problem with this method? You forget. I don't know if you're like me, but my memory is horrible. I forget everything like within 24 hours. I forget. I read the Sanders book. I read 10, 15 pages. And when I'm at the 15 page, I forgot what I read on the first page. The, am I the only one? Does that happen to you as well? Well... Uh, don't feel bad. It, it, it is a common feeling. And, and why? Why does that happen? Because you don't stop to think the reasons of why a certain nursing action is important. So why do we check peripheral pulses in addition to have a baseline? What are all the reasons? Well, we check pulses because it will give us information on circulation, irrigation of the inferior limbs and other areas in the body, okay? So it is necessary to evaluate, and this is important, not only, not only the strength of the pulse, but also you need to identify if there is any significant difference between one side of the body and the other side of the body. I give you an example. Let's say one extremity, when you assess the pulses, you identify a two plus pulse. What, what does that mean? And then when you check the other extremity, you see that the other extremity is one plus. So the right extremity is two plus and the left extremity is one plus. What does that finding indicate? Okay. So what this indicate that that aneurysm, okay, because we're talking about pre-op, right? Before the surgery, what that indicates is that the aneurysm is affecting more the left common iliac artery, or it indicates that there are complications of perfusion in that extremity. So by assessing the pulses, both pulses on both sides, we can really identify how this aneurysm is affecting our patient. So 
pre-op assessment of peripheral pulses is extremely important. Another action, another nursing action pre-op is to instruct the client on cough and deep breathing exercises. And this is very interesting. You know why? Because usually the cough and deep breathe, we see it pose up, right? We see a pose up to prevent like complications uh, from immobility, like pneumonia, atelectasis, but also it's a good indication pre-op. Why? Why is this a good indication pre-op? Well, we want to increase the return of blood to the heart through the inferior vena cava. This is important to maintain normal organ perfusion before the surgery. Remember, the perfusion could be affected because of the aneurysm. So now we see that how coughing and deep breathing not only helps with the respiratory part, because yes, it helps to maintain an adequate respiratory physiology and oxygenation to the organs, but also plays an important role in perfusion and circulation. So now you can start understanding the whys. Why am I doing this preoperative intervention? Now you can say, oh, now I understand why I have to check peripheral pulses and why I have to teach my patient about coughing and deep breathing exercises. Does that make sense to you? Is this making sense to you? Comment in the comment section. I want to know. I want to feel that you're here. Teaching online is very difficult. To maintain a connection online is extremely difficult. You have to be a, a, an expert at this to, to have that feeling. It's so much easier to teach a class in person where you can see the, the students smiling or, or serious or, or whatever. Here online is, is, is rather difficult, but we have to do the best we can to, to give this information and help basically nurses around the globe because there are nurses from all over the world connecting in this YouTube live, in this Instagram, TikTok live. So do, does that make sense? If it makes sense to you, comment. Comment in the comment section. Yes, professor, it makes sense. I'm learning. This is important. Let's talk about post-operative interventions. As you can see, post-operative interventions are more in-depth. There's a little bit more going on. So the first thing, we have to monitor vital signs. Basically, post-op, the vital signs are monitored very frequently. At the beginning, within the first one to two hours, we almost check it every 15 minutes. Then, as the patient starts stabilizing, we switch it to checking every 30 minutes, then every hour, then every two hours. But why are we checking for vital signs? Well, we got to check blood pressure. We got to check the heart rate. We have to check the O2 saturation. We have to identify through vital signs that the perfusion to the organs, the oxygenation, the hemodynamic stability of the patient is okay. Especially in this period, post-op, we have to identify if this abdominal aortic aneurysm repair is successful. We have to also monitor peripheral pulses distal to the graft site. We did it pre-op, we have to do it post-op now. Remember, pre-op gave you Pre-op gave you a baseline. Now you are comparing. Oh, so pre-op was this way, and now post-op is this way. Does that show an improvement? Because if there is no improvement, it's the same. The hours pass, it's the same. We have to notify the surgeon. Hey, doc, you know, something's going on here. In comparison to the baseline, there's not really a whole lot of change going on. Something, something's not good. We have to monitor for signs of graft occlusion, which includes changes in pulses, cool to cold extremity below the graft, 
white or blue extremities. Blue extremities, cyanosis, not, not oxygen. Severe pain, abdominal distension. Okay? So this is important. We have to limit elevation of the head of the bed to 45 degrees to prevent flexion of the graft. Remember, why is this changing position important? Understanding how far can you go? We want to prevent increase of intra-abdominal pressure. We want to prevent graft compression. We have to monitor for hypovolemia, and that is in black, stronger. ABC, airway, breathing circulation, extremely important on the anklex. So monitor for signs of hypovolemia, kidney failure, resulting from significant blood loss during surgery. So we want to avoid an acute kidney injury due to low renal perfusion. So yes, we have to check the urinary output. We have to check the serum creatinine, the BUN. We have to check the renal function because it's the best, excellent indicator of accurate blood flow perfusion. So what else? What else is important? What else can you do? So other than what I've mentioned so far, what comes to mind? What else do you think you can do? I've, I've given you a lot, but you have to think critically. What else can you do as a nurse? Think. What else? Well, we have to monitor respiratory stabs. We have to auscultate the patient. We have to identify if there are any respiratory complications. Because yes, we could see respiratory complication. What is an example? What is an example of a respiratory complication that we can see? You know, the patient had a big surgery. The patient is laying in bed. We can see complications post-op such as atelectasis. Encourage turning, coughing, and deep breathing, and splinting the incision. Meaning, if the patient's gonna move, use a pillow to protect that abdomen. And the reason for that, because we want the patient moving to prevent pneumonia. We also want to prevent DVTs, deep vein thrombosis. So we gotta keep that body moving somehow. At the beginning, at the early post-op periods, the patient might not be able to be moving, walking around, but at least we got to do turn and reposition. And then, as soon as the doctor's orders come, ambulate as prescribed. Early ambulation prevents many complications post-op. But this is not a decision that we make. The doctor makes the decision using their medical knowledge. We follow the order. Now, I ask you a question. Patient pulls up. This huge surgery is the first time that the patient is going to be walking. Are you going to delegate that to the UAP, to the LPN? And I know we're going a little bit outside the scope of tonight's training, of today's training, but you got to think critically. You're a nurse. Are you going to be delegating this to the UAP? No. We have to assess the patient. We have to identify if there is any dizziness. The patient's been laying in bed for, for uh, hours. We have to see if the patient is developing any, developing any orthostatic hypotension. So it's important to think, think critically. Why? Why I cannot delegate this to the UAP? Prepare the client for discharge by providing instructions regarding pain management, wound care, activity restrictions. What? What activity restriction? Well, no lifting of objects heavier than 15 to 20 pounds for 6 to 12 weeks. That's important. That's important post-op teaching. That's an important discharge teaching. 
Advise the client to avoid activities require heavy pushing, pulling, or straining to prevent complications. Now, what are known operatory complications, post-op, intra-op complications? What are some general complications that we could see? Hemorrhage, acute renal injury, now you know why. Why? Why can a patient develop acute renal injury? Now you understand why. If the patient develops heavy bleeding, hemorrhage, low perfusion to the kidneys, we're going to see damage to the kidney, alteration in the kidney function. We're going to see lab values such as the creatinine, BUN moved. We can see elevated creatinine levels, higher than 1.2. Ischemic colitis, distal emboli, infection, graft thrombosis, aortic fistulae, neurological deficit, ureter ureteral obstruction, sexual dysfunction, chylus ascites, perigraft seroma. So these are complications that you can see. Now that you have an understanding of the procedure, now it makes sense to look at the question. See, when you were looking at this question originally, maybe you were even guessing. Maybe you were, uh, I think this is the answer, but, but I'm not sure. I don't know if that's the priority, but now you know. Now when you look at this question, you will know what the answer is and why. So, answer in the comment section what you think is the answer and why. What is the greatest concern? Diminished breath sounds in bilateral lung bases? Hypoactive bowel sounds in all four quadrants? Urinary output of 90 ml in the past four hours? Warm extremities with one plus bilateral pedal pulses. So, what do you think is the answer? What makes sense to you? Ebony, I don't mean to interrupt, Professor. I took the NCLEX November 29 and I passed. With your strategies, I have learned from your course. I have told all my friends about your preparation. Thank you, Ebony. No interruption. I appreciate it. Thanks for letting us know. Okay, I see some of you answering three. Answer three. All right, let me see. Uh, some of you answering number one. Number four. Ah, very interesting. I saw that some of you at the beginning of the presentation, when you saw the question, you were thinking of one. Oh, breathing, airway, airway, breathing has the priority. Oh, it's very important, guys, to understand something. Is airway and breathing always the priority? No. It depends on the scenario. It depends on what is going on. So let's look at the scenario. 48 hours post-abdominal aneurysm repair. Which assessment finding is the greatest concern? And we see number one, diminished breath sound in bilateral lung bases. Okay, is this normal? Is this expected? Is this a complication? So why, why diminish breath sounds? What can we think about this? Well, 
we know that if a patient had this type of surgery, there's going to be pain. We still pretty early, two days post-op. And when the patient has that pain, sometimes the deep inspiration causes more pain. So the patient starts to control the breathing a little bit. So it is normal sometimes in the early post-op period to develop diminished breath sounds. Now, are we going to do nothing about it? No, we have to do something about it. We should be teaching the patient how to use the incentive spirometer. Okay? It is important, but it's not my priority at the moment. Because it's a common finding post-op. Now, it's not telling me that the patient is in respiratory distress. It's not telling me that the patient O2 saturation is 80, indicating hypoxemia. So yeah, it deals with breathing, but it's something expected. So you could be using a little bit here the SAR method strategy of critical thinking, but we're not going to go into that. It, it will get too complicated. Number two, hypoactive bowel sounds in all four quadrants. Okay? It is common to see hypoactive bowel sounds typically after abdominal surgery. Okay? So this is this is common. We can eliminate it. Okay? Number three, urinary output is 90 ml in the past four hours. Ooh. What do you think about this? What is the normal, the minimum urinary output per hour? The minimum is 30. So 30 per hour, and it says in the past four hours, 30 times four, 120. So the urinary output should be in the 120 ml area. So the kidneys, urinary output, not normal, is below. What does that indicate? We saw that what was one of the complications of this surgery. We saw hemorrhage. And what was number two? Acute kidney injury. So what does a urinary output of 90 in four hours indicate? What does this indicate? Maybe the renal perfusion is compromised. You have to be thinking of that. So the next thing we got to be doing is what is the creatinine level? What is the BUN? Because this indicates a complication of the surgery. So what is the priority? Something that is expected post-op or something that is unexpected post-op. And the ones that were in yesterday's class, class in a Master Next Generation course, we were talking about the SAR method strategy. Here it is. Expected versus unexpected. One and two is expected. Three is unexpected that deals with circulation. Oh, and here you can learn something very important. Professor, but number one is breathing. And I thought breathing has priority over circulation. Yes, most of the time. But if we have a breathing expected problem versus a circulation unexpected problem, the unexpected takes the priority. So the circulatory prom comp compromise now, the compromise in the renal perfusion is unexpected complication of the surgery. Therefore, in this scenario, circulation has the priority. 
And number four, one extremity with one plus bilateral pedal pulses. What does that indicate? Well, we will have to compare to what was the pre-op pulses. The good thing is that it's bilateral, so it's on both sides. Doesn't mean that one area is more affected than the other. We have to assess that. Maybe we have to do a, use a Doppler ultrasound. So four is important, but it's not more important than three. So three would be my priority in this scenario. So the nurse in this scenario should carefully monitor renal status because acute kidney injury is a complication, a serious complication post abdominal aortic aneurysm repair. Check the BUN, check the creatinine and continue to assess the urinary output. That is the priority. Okay. Does that make sense? Do you understand why? Why in this case, circulation has the priority over breathing. That is extremely important. If you go to the NCLEX answering like a robot, like, oh, ABC is the priority, airway, breathing. No, that's not going to work. You have to think critically. Okay. Very good. All right. Awesome. Well, if you are a nursing student, your primary language or your, uh, the language that you speak is English. We have an international membership. You can uh, join our membership. I will, I have posted the link in our, in the comment section, in the description, in the YouTube channel is the international membership It's very inexpensive. You can see quality videos on how to think critically how to uh, apply nursing knowledge and pass your NCLEX. If you are Spanish speaking, that's your primary language and you want to prepare for the, N for the NCLEX other than the YouTube channel, you can join our gold membership, basically four courses in one. You can uh, pay it monthly or buy the, the three month membership or six month. There are more than 177 videos in this membership. I've also posted the link to our membership in our description here on, on YouTube. Okay. If you have any questions for our Academy, once again, here is the number you're more than welcome to call us and we'll try to guide you and help you. Okay. If you haven't uh, subscribed to our YouTube channel, please go so NCLEX Crusade International. Make sure you're subscribed. Activate the bell so you don't miss tomorrow's training. Okay, tomorrow's training is gonna be a little bit later, more in the afternoon, maybe around five or six p.m. I will let you know, but we will be discussing another interesting topic. So make sure you're liking this video, share it with other nurses. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to guide you and help you here in our social media. God bless you all. That is it for today's training. I will see you tomorrow.